Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a preview of the 7th Panzer Division, an East German division available in the upcoming Devout update. Please remember that this is early access and was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. I'll go through all of the units and we'll put together a quick deck. Now there is a couple of disclaimers that I wanted to put across from the devs uh, going into this. Uh, the first is that the T-72 is still a work in progress and is being reworked as we speak and also the MI-2 is currently missing from the division so that will be added at a later date. Uh, so bear that in mind. But starting off we have the MTLB munition truck to get us going in the logistic tab. It's an armoured 500 supply unit which is really nice for resupplying units close to the front line because it does have a little bit of armor makes it able to stay alive definitely love the model on this thing very cool even has the correct icon there and we have the t813 big big supply truck with the eight wheels there 1750 supply in this bad boy does have one front armor no side rear or top armor 81 kilometer speed by the way that's off-road pretty nice uh, on these cards the mtlb you can get nine on one card and with the t813 you can get three moving on we have the bcr 50pu a very very nice model this one like it a lot lots of detail and yeah it has two front armor one side one rear one top armor just just standard armored command unit with no with no weapons that is then we have the bmp 1k sb2 which is a malutka armed bmp 1k and yeah acts as a command vehicle pretty cool then we have the sbw 40 pk or p2k which is the command brdm basically 90 km per hour off-road speed does make this quite a nifty thing. So probably a bit more useful than the BTR 50PU in that case. Because this thing is pretty damn slow off-road. And moving on to the infantry tab. We have the UAZ 469 SBG 9. Uh, which is the recoilless rifle UAZ. Uh, does have the 14 penetration. Accuracy, a little bit better than it used to be, <laughs> that's for sure, with the 43% accuracy on the SBG now. I think it used to have like 15% or something, uh, that's obviously been fixed. Uh, so yeah, less of a meme cannon, more of a traditional recoilless. It's going to be actually more scary than they used to be, for sure. Uh, going to be worrying to side shot armoured targets and can probably kill light armoured targets in the front armor pretty effectively especially since it does have the 11 round per minute rate of fire and moving on we have the Panzerjäger so these are a six man squad that have six AK-74 sorry and two RPG 7 VRs so they're a double AT squad which I think at close range <coughs> excuse me is going to do quite a bit of damage to armor like, you're not going to want to get side shot by these boys because you are definitely going down. Now, against the front armor of something like an Abrams, you, like a, like the M1A1HA, for example, you're only going to be doing one damage per hit. But the rate of fire between the two, you know, it's going to make them pretty deadly, honestly. So I think this is a squad you're going to have to watch out for, for sure. And you can get nine of them in a, on a card, 40 points. And they can come in with an array of transports. They've got the BMP-1 SP-1, which is the BMP-1 with just the cannon and a machine gun. Then there's the BMP-1 SP-2, which comes with the Malagutka P missile. They can also be brought in with the BTR-50 PK, which has the machine gun on it. And then there's also the SBW-70 there as well. Then there's uh, finally the truck, <laughs> your standard W50 
L A A. These trucks again, they look so awesome. Like all of the models, I say it every time, the models are so well done in this game. Very nice. So there you go. Um, I think personally, I'd probably bring them in the SBW 70 just because it's fast and it allows you to get these uh, tasty RPGs close to the enemy. Anyway, moving on, we have the Pioneer Führer. These have the RPG 7VL as opposed to the 7VR which has 18 penetration rather than 20. Uh, but, you know, cheap leader, 130 points, uh, with the ability to be brought in the SBW-70 or the MTLB, or even the UAZ-469 uh, there. Get three of those on a card. And there's the Pioneers. Uh, the Pioneers have seven AK-74s, the PKM and the Satchel Charges, Eight-man squad comes in with the SBW-70, the MTLB, and the W-50LAA. A pretty decent close-range infantry squad, honestly. And there's the Pioneer Flam. These guys have the AK-74's PKM again. Eight-man squad. They have this flamethrower. And this flamethrower actually has 530 meter range. I'm curious how good this thing's actually going to be because it basically has 100% accuracy and it does a decent chunk of damage so maybe this can actually melt infantry at close range uh, I've yet to try it but I can imagine it's pretty good in towns especially uh, SBW-70 can be brought in with it and the MTLB and the W-50 are the choices for transports uh, then there is the Mordschützenführer. Mordschützenführer has five points less. It has a way worse AT weapon with only 13 penetration. And then there's the BTR on the Mordschützen with the BTR, which has the SPW-70 there, which is the BTR. So that's cool. These guys just have the six AK-74s. got two RPKs. And then the RPG-7VL, you can see the RPK there. Very cool. I think these could be pretty decent, maybe more decent actually than the Pioneers. Because having the, the two MGs there is probably going to be better. Even though the rate of fire is less, because the combined rate of fire is higher, right? So, yeah, I think overall damage is going to be... Uh, saying that, it might be about the same. Yeah. Well, actually, no. This is like 0 0.02 less on the Pioneer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 0 0.02 left, but the Pioneer gets a satchel. So, at close range, the Pioneers are obviously going to be way better. But I think the Mutchers and BTR are actually pretty nice. I think at the Mutchers as well in different transports like the Mordschutz and Führer. You can use the BMP-1 SP-1, the BMP-1 SP-2, BTR-50 PK and the W-50 LAA. Same goes for the standard infantry squad. For 45 points, I don't think these are too bad. Like honestly, these infantry squads seem pretty good and the availability is quite nuts on them, especially since you can probably go do something like this. You know, you can literally have just so many squads of these boys. And the activation points isn't even that high. And moving on, we have the artillery tab. Pretty simple tab. Kvodzika, we've seen it before. Uh, the Akatsaya, again, seen it before. Um, and then we have the RM70. Now this thing's a good old MLRS with 122mm rockets. Get 80 of the bad boys. And yeah, I haven't really tried this thing out much. Well, actually, I actually haven't tried it out at all. So, yeah, curious to see how it works out. But, you know, could be pretty nice. Like, having 80 rockets, quite a lot. The HE rockets, though, and 122mm rockets might be a little bit small in terms of, like, how much damage they're going to do. But, yeah, yet to try it, so can't really say much more than that. I'm moving on to the tank tab. So, this is, of course, a panzer division. You'd expect quite a lot to see here. 
Um, the T72s again are work in progress, so bear that in mind. Uh, but the Flampanzer TO55 here is what we're starting with. It is a flamethrower tank. It does have a 16 penetration main gun, which is pretty good for a 50 point tank. Seven front armor, it's nice. Uh, the flamethrower has a range of 1060 meters. This is going to be like the perfect tank for supporting your infantry at close range in forests. It's going to be really nice for that. Uh, then we have the T55A Führer. Uh, this has the upgrades of the T55A. So, just a better gun mainly, I think. Although I say that, the gun doesn't seem to be much different. The HE is better on it. It does, however, get those machine guns. And it does get a little bit of extra top armor. Just trying to like compare them here. <laughs> compare between the two. I guess I can pin that and we can have a look. Yeah, the optics also go up on the T55A. Not sure that's terribly important since the TO55 is always going to be at super close range. Yeah, interesting. Uh, these are only 55 points as well for the T55A. So, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. And uh, the T55A Führer does get the command tax. That's why it's 100 points more. Let me move on to the T55AM2. Now the AM2 does get more front armor and side armor. It also has a gun that fires further, but not not fires harder. Like it has the same penetration but longer range, and way better accuracy. So yeah, that T55 AM2 actually looking pretty good, and also the model for this is pretty nice, with that extra sort of turret plating on the front there. As you can see, and between the two, one has the turret there. Also, the front armor is slightly shaped differently. So yeah, I love the way these models are detailed. And if you're wondering why things have like winter camo in some cases, it's because it's a theoretical from Eugen that all like this would have been sort of spring summer in uh, when the war starts, right? And then the command tanks wouldn't be repainted because they're behind your lines anyway, generally. So um, they wouldn't kind of waste time doing that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's T-55s. There's also the T-55AM-2B, which does have the 9M117 Sackloss missile uh, that it can fire out of its main gun uh, with the 18 penetration there. I think that's the same weapon that the BMP3 uses. So an HGM with 2,827 meter range. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, either way, that's the HGM there. Then there's the Conkers, the classic 20 pen, 2,650 meter range. Seen this bad boy before. <laughs> and then we've got the T-72s. So there's a standard T-72, currently has 11 front armor, 6 side armor. Of course, this is work in progress, so do bear, bear with me. You know, got, got to take everything with a pinch of salt here. Um, 2,120 meter range with 18 pen. Doesn't seem too bad. Pretty big gun. Uh, just, you know, low armor in comparison to other heavier tanks. So there you go. And then we have the T-72GM, which again has relatively low armor for what you're paying. Uh, 12 front armor, 7 side armor, but has a pretty tasty gun which can now fire up to 2,295 meter range as opposed to uh, 2,120. So yeah, that's very nice. Uh, we can compare them with the same um, veterancy so you can see that the accuracy is in fact better as well on the T-72GM. Uh, then we have the T-72 GM-1, which has 14 front armor and 7 side armor there. So even better armor on that boy. And you can get 6 of them on a card, which is nice. 
there you go. That's your tanks. So a bunch of T-72s. Again, models work in progress. The whole thing's just potential to change, so do bear with that. All right, moving on to the recon tab. We have the BRDM2. Nice, reliable, cheap uh, recon vehicle. Then we have the Aufthala. These guys have three AK-74s, the RPK, and an RPG-18. Can come in the UAZ. And there's the Aufthala Heavy, which are similar to like the Resvedka Heavy in the way that they've done this. Uh, so they just get kind of more men. Um, and they have the like the same weapons, pretty much. Just So this unit gets three more rifles. They can be brought in with these BMPs, so the BMP-1, SP-1, the SP-2. Uh, they can use the MI-8T as well. Uh, let me just dump in that. So there's the MI-8T. This thing looks really cool. I love the paint job. And it comes with the two rocket pods on either side. So 57 mil rockets there. And then, of course, the truck. And we have the Special Aufklara, like the Special Forces boys. These guys come with seven AKSU-74s. And then the two RPKs and then the RPG-22. So slightly better penetration on the RPG-22. But the weapons on these, not bad at all. You know, at closer ranges, their damage is actually pretty damn high. And they come in at, like, max vet. So, yeah, pretty nuts. Although the base accuracy on the AKSU-74 is really low, actually, now I think about it. So maybe they won't do that much damage. Yeah, we'll see. I'll definitely try them out. But they can be brought in with the MI-8T or in the truck. And then we have the BRM-1. Is the last option here with the logo on there. A little attention to detail on these models is really, really nice. Let's move on to the AA tab. So here we have the Strela 2M. In the previous video with the 5th Panzer, I said about the red eye being bad. Well, the Strela 2M, pretty much in the same boat. It's pretty terrible. Um, even at 2 vet, this thing only has 37% accuracy. <laughs> so that should pretty much explain that. But it is a man pad, so you're probably going to end up taking some anyway. Uh, but yeah, regardless, not looking too great. 20 points pop. Uh, 12 on a card, that is. You can bring in one one card. Uh, then there's the Shilka. The Shilka is radar, so it can be killed by seed. But it's pretty cheap, so it's not a big deal if that happens. Range against aircrafts, relatively generous. 2,650 meters. And range against helicopters is 2,470. Can also fire at ground targets. I think, honestly, the Shilka is very reasonably priced. And they come in at four vet. Or two vet, sorry. And you get four of them. Then there's the Kub M3. This thing has insane range against aircraft. 4,594 meters range against aircraft. With 50% accuracy and 9 HE. So this thing's a bit of a beast now, especially since ECM will be nerfed, or has been nerfed. Uh, so it is no longer additive ECM. E ECM is now more complicative, uh, which means that um, you're basically having less ECM overall on aircraft. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, what I mean by that is the ECM... When you have like 50% ECM against 50% accuracy, it's not just like minusing 50%. It's like 50% of 50%. So it'd be like 25% rather than the minimum, which is 10% accuracy. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, so there you go. So technically the cubs are a lot better because the thing that made them bad in the past was their accuracy is just terrible, right? So their accuracy being terrible is not as bad as it once was. Uh, th and then we have a card of the Strela 10Ms. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, they have the 8 5 HE infrared there. Alright, moving on. We have the helicopters. So this is the MI-8 TV Rocket 1, which has the 57mm rocket pod layout. Uh, then there's the Rocket 2, which has the well, 57mm rocket layout again, but more of them. You can see the 
size of the rocket pods is basically doubled across the entire of all of its pods there. So it actually doubles the price of the helicopter. Not entirely sure if it's worth double the price. Uh, so there's that. Especially since you could just use these and then reload it, right? So uh, I'm not sure if it's warranted that this is double price, but <laughs> it does get double the payload. Um, then there's the MI-24 DAT. This is a very old MI-24. It has a terrible HGM. The Falanga P, which is 16 penetration uh, with 50% accuracy, and that's with veterancy. So, yeah. Pretty awful. The 57mm rockets, it gets 128 of them. It's pretty good. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It might be quite nice to use this as a rocket uh, aircraft instead of like the Mi-8 TV, just because you do get an HGM with it. And then you also get the rockets, which are, you know, exactly the same, more or less. So, yeah, I guess it's kind of good in that respect. And then there's the Mi-24 P-80, which has 80mm rockets as opposed to 57mm rockets. It gets the COCOM missile, and it also gets the 30mm. 30 30mm 30 on the side here, front-facing. So, yeah, going to be pretty nice at taking down helicopters with that. Curious to try it out. Then we have the air tab. The MiG-21 BIS is going to be leading the charge. Uh, there has been noted quite a few of the bomb layouts and stuff on these uh, aircraft is going to be changed probably. Um, so do bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, for now, MiG-21 BIS uh, does come with four 250 kilogram bombs. Uh, for 60 points, it's not too bad, honestly. 10% ECM, 1,463 kilometer per hour speed. Then there's the MiG-21 BIS with rockets. Now this is actually quite nice because it has the 122mm rockets. This obviously has the potential to change, but I quite like the fact that it gets some of them because it allows it to kill infantry quite quickly. I am quite a big fan of rocket planes. I think they are very nice. And this one being fast, as long as it can fire fast enough to keep up with its own speed, uh, could like one pass infantry squads which would be great against things like mechanized rifles which are actually quite expensive so yeah, this could be quite a cost efficient uh, rocket aircraft and then there's the MiG-21 BIS with AA weapons uh, with the R-60M infrared missile uh, which does have the 3,534 meter range against aircraft with 50% accuracy so a spammable air-to-air -air fighter then there's the MiG-23 MF. Uh, this has six 500 kilogram bombs. So relatively decent payload. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about it. Only 10% ECM though. But again, decent speed, 1,463 kilometer per hour. I'm not sure how what the bombing uh, layout of these is. Whether or not they all like kind of drop together or if they like drop in a line. Um, that will definitely determine how effective these can be. Then there's the MiG-23 MFAT, which does currently come with the KH-29Ds. I believe that the MiG-23 in real life couldn't use these. That's uh, also I've heard. Uh, so we see it might change. Um, again, of course, everything is subject to change here. Um, so do bear that in mind. Um, but for now, this is a pretty nice air-to-ground missile. It does a lot of damage uh, with the 50% accuracy there. Um, it does also have four infrared missiles uh, that it can use to take on enemy aircraft. Uh, decent speed, 10% ECM. SU-22M4 is just an SU-22 with bombs. Four 500 kilogram bombs also has a couple of infrared missiles. 30% ECM though on the SU-22s with 1,229 kilometers per hour speed slightly slower but you do get the extra ECM so that's very nice indeed then there's the cluster variant which does have the four 500 kilogram bomb uh, cluster munitions uh, these do have the nine penetration in the top armor so yeah they're okay uh, not as many I think as the SU-24M 
I think like this is pretty much half the amount. So yeah, unless the SC24M has six, uh, it might have six or eight, I can't remember. Uh, regardless, it's, that one's only got four. Um, then we got Napalm, 500 kilogram bomb Napalm. And then we have the SU22M4K, which has the uh, KH29T TV guided, TV guided missiles. So again, 30 penetration with 3,534 meter range. It's actually longer than the MiG-23MF's KH-29Ds. The KH-29Ds are semi-active. It's got to be pointing in the right direction. Um, and then same with these. These are semi-active. Both, I think, are TV-guided technically uh, because they have the cameras in the front, don't they? Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, strong missile with the extra range. Going to be super strong. Uh, with 62% accuracy as well. That's a really, really good air-to-ground um, missile. Uh, then there's the KH-28, which makes this the seed SU-22. Good for taking out enemy AA. 40% ECM. Absolutely brilliant. So I think these are very strong. And there you have it. That's all of the units in the 7th Panzer Division. So what we're going to do, we'll go through and make a quick deck. Uh, so in the logistics, we're probably going to bring in the MTLBs just because they're easy to dot around. Great for reloading man pads and repairing little bits of damage here and there. And then there's the T813s, which we'll definitely bring in because they bring in like the major supply for when you really need to, you know, get those major repairs or major reloads going, particularly for like rocket artillery, for example. Um, although you don't really get much rocket artillery in this I, I don't know. Maybe you need it for the RM70s, but I will be trying them out. Um, in terms of command, I'm thinking we go for the SBW because it's fastest and it doesn't have any weapons, so it won't reveal itself unnecessarily if I'm not paying attention. <laughs> uh, we're going to bring in the UAZ for 6.9s with their little uh, buff to their accuracy. Uh, then we will probably bring in the Panzerjägers in the SBW-20s. I think that's going to be a super strong combo. And then we'll be bringing in... Let's see. I think Pioneers and Pioneer Flam I want to try. So we're going to bring some of these in SBW-70s. Some of these in SBW-70s. And then I'm also, of course, going to be bringing in some Mod Schützen. I'm thinking the squads and the BMPs might be okay. Although maybe having the extra man really makes a big difference. Yeah, let's bring in one with the SBWs and we'll bring in some with like the BMP without an HGM. Although it is nice to have an HGM. I feel like the Maliutka is not terrible. So let's do the BMP-1 SP-1. And then maybe a Motchison as well. Or, well, the Pioneer Fiddle would be better because it's a better unit. We'll bring them in the UAZ, I think. There we go. Okay. I might want to take out that unit later on. Or a unit here later on. But for now, that'll do. Uh, we will bring in one of these rocket launcher units because I think they're going to be decent. I'm going to bring in one card of Akatsaya. I'm just going to leave that RT tab otherwise. Um, in the tank tab, I mean this is the Panzer Division, we're going to probably go all out on the T-72s. Uh, so we'll bring in the T-72GM1s. I don't know if they're going to be better off with veterancy. Like, they obviously will be better, but I don't know if having, like, extra amount of them is a good idea. I think I'm just going to keep them up vetted. You only get one card of each of those. I'm going to do something like this. We'll bring in the T-55 AMB-2. And also these AM2s. I'm going to bring in two cards of these. Bring one card of those. Bring in a card of those. 
And I'll also bring in the T55A Führer, I think. Okay, let's move on to the recon tab. I'm going to bring in the BR EM2. There will eventually be an MI2 recon in here, but it's not available yet, as I mentioned at the start of the video. So we'll go BRM and some Special Zalfklara. And let's take out the, the BRM. We'll put in two cards of these. I'll put one in trucks, one, one in aircraft, and then I'm also going to do probably Alfklara. Get 12 on a card, so that's pretty nice. Right here. I was going to bring in some Strela 2Ms, but I think the sh the amount of Shulkers you get is nice. We're going to do Shulkers. We're going to do two cards of Cubs, some Strela 10Ms, and that's going to be a risky AA tab, but we'll go for we'll go with it for now. We're going to bring in the Mo24D here. I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Could also bring in the MI24P. Oh yeah, I wanted to try out the 30 mil, of course. And then air tab. I'm gonna use the seed for sure. Get four on a card, it's really nice. You get two cards of them. Like that's a lot of SU22s. Like the air support here is big. Like I'm tempted to bring in both of those because because it's so strong. I am gonna bring in the yeah, the seed variant, the AT variant. I think the cluster variant is probably a good idea. I want to try the MiG-21 rockets. Not a huge fan of the MiG-23s. So I think we'll do... Let's see, which one do I want? Mm, maybe the MiG-23 bombs isn't a terrible idea. Because it's got a better payload, then you get less of them. So let's just go with the SU-22 M4 with the HE. And that's going to be all of our activation points used. So we'll save it there. Uh, let me just call that the 7th Panzer Division. I'll save it. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. Here you have it, the Seventh Panzer Division. I think this division is pretty damn generous on infantry availability to a certain extent. If I were to not bring in the UAZs, I'd have quite a lot of the Modschids, and, and I think Modschids are going to be pretty damn strong in close combat. I don't have that many of them in the deck right now, but I'll probably add more of them in the future. But I do want to <laughs> mess around with the UAZ. Like I tend to build my, my decks more for fun before optimizing them. Um, so in this case, just adding a lot of the stuff that I want to try. Um, the RM-70 and the Akatsaya. I think Akatsaya is probably going to be more meta. The RM-70, I think the payload's probably going to be a little bit small for damage-wise. Um, logistics seems okay. Tank tab seems cool with the T-72s. It's going to be interesting to see how they go up against Abrams, though, and particularly, of, of course, the Leopards. Uh, I think the T-72s will do well against, like, anything but the 2A3 and the M1A1HAs, but they, they will be okay against, like, M1A1s and anything lower than that. Then the T-55s are more going to be used for taking out enemy, like, APCs, like Bradleys and stuff, rather than engaging enemy tanks. Um... Recon tabs, quite generous on the availability, so that's good. AA tabs risky, just because I don't really have that many units of AA. Like, if I were to change anything, I'd probably take out some of the cubs and put in some um, some man pads. Helicopter tab, it's alright. I want to try out this MI24P. I'm curious uh, if that can really shoot down helicopters easily with the 30 mils. And then the SU-24s in the air tab. You get a lot of those SU-22s if you want. Very nice. So yeah, I quite like the 7th Panzer Division. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, but that is going to be it for now. Please remember that this is, of course, a work-in-progress build. 
and things are definitely subject to change uh, a lot of things will change here so yeah bear that in mind but i just of course had the opportunity to show it off to you guys and big thanks to you jim for letting me do that um so yeah that's it hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye yeah,